heaven. For one day, Bumper? This is typical. This place is out thousands every week. The yearly amount could support some small country. It's all part of the overhead. Well, it doesn't have to be. Maybe we should tighten up on the rules, you know, insist on double ID, maybe some print. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea, kid. Print the high rollers. How long do you think we'll stay in business then? Okay, so forget the thumbprints. At least ask for a charge card. Listen, kid, when I want suggestions, I'll ask for them, all right? Just... And by the way, from now on, keep your nose out of the books. That's my department. Yeah. For you. Thank you. A personal call. Maybe I should tighten up on those rules, too, huh? This is Wally McCandler. This is Wally McCandler. How impressive. Hi, Brenda. In the mood to buy a lady dinner? Anytime. How about tonight? What, are you kidding? How'd you swing that? Not important. Can you get free? Uh, Brenda, I got a lot of... Yeah, I'll get free. Good. Because, Wally, it's real important. It's got to be tonight. Oh, it sounds very serious. It's not serious. But it's real important. I'll see you later. I love you. I love you, too. Well, there you are, finally. You have other patients to see, Mr. Morgan. No kidding. This may amaze and surprise you, Mr. Morgan, but I do have other duties besides putting up with your bad humor and complaints. And a life outside the hospital. Which is none of your business. It runs in a family. Am I supposed to understand that remark? But your son and uh, my esteemed doctor were supposed to be here at 2.30 for some important test and he didn't show. And that nurse, uh, uh, you know, the one that's always in a good mood. Uh, Wendy. Yeah, her. And she gave me some cock and bull story about uh, personal business. So like I said, Runs in the family. It was my understanding that Thomas had made arrangements for another physician to handle your test. I wouldn't see him. Why not? Because he's not my doctor. I want my own doctor. So everything else has to come to a grinding halt because of what you want, Mr. Morgan? You know, Thomas is not at your service 24 hours a day. He has other patients just as important as you are and other problems. Oh, boy. Now you're talking about his love life. Thomas, what's the matter? I want the truth, Kelly. About you and Trey. Are you having an affair with him? I don't think that's smart to know. I don't understand. I saw you a few hours ago. You didn't say anything about it. You left my office and went right straight to him. I saw the two of you together. You looked like... You looked like Lars. And I am here now for you to tell me that it isn't true. Like that just comes with the territory. Drug withdrawal. What I saw was real. Sweetheart, it may have seemed very real to you, but I think you're going to find Do once you, remember? you get up. You remember her? Yeah, I guess, but you had a lot of doubts. Huh? And when we were little, when you'd get mad at me, you used to hide her from me. And then I would cry and I would whine. So you couldn't take it anymore and you'd give her back. Yeah. I used to tell her story after story after story. Each is amending, and she lived happily ever after. You don't must seem near being in your old room again, huh? I mean, uh, I don't think you've ever changed a thing. In fact, I was always jealous that you had the best view in the house. I used to pretend like she was a princess. Just like me. Maybe that's why Daddy still calls me that. Listen to me. Julie! Grace told me you were here. 
You know, I would never have noticed him had he told me. Nobody ever told me anything. Well, perfect timing. Did I interrupt? No. Oh, you found Sabrina. You know, I leave her here for you just in case. <laughs> you see? I'm so glad you're back. Um, you can share the room with Sabrina for as long as you want, too. But the window seat is hers. Thanks. Actually, uh, if you need anything, anything I can get you. No. I'm okay. I'm just tired. Well, now uh, you want us to go. I enjoy having you both here. I guess I'm just really tired. Um, I could stay here with you until you fall asleep if you want. No, I really think I'd rather be alone, but thanks. Look, if there's anything that you need to give me a call, okay? You gonna be okay? because I need you to cover for me. I'm flying up to Atlantic City, no. and Mom and Dad will throw a fit, and I don't want to deal with it. Oh, right? no, perfect timing, as usual, Ben. Come on, I haven't seen Molly for a whole week. Today's a very important day for us. Is that right? Why is that? It's none of your business. <laughs> but I need you to cover for me, okay? Uh, no way. Look, Brenda, if you go to Atlantic City, and they find out, I know, back to the family whipping post. Sure. No. However, I will go with you. Good luck. Oh, the good doctor does have a private life, huh? Well, well. How does he squeeze it in? From what I've seen around here, the kid works 14 hours a day. Well, he manages. The lady in his life must have the patience of a saint. We are talking about a lady, aren't we? Mr. Morgan, to put it bluntly, that really is none of your business. My, my, my. Aren't we touchy today? Must be the company I'm keeping. Cut me to the quick, dear lady. Oh, uh, just that I'm concerned about Tom. Really? Really. I'd hate to see him end up being a crusty old bachelor like me. Wouldn't you? Well, maybe you should think about uh, your own personal life, Mr. Morgan. It's never too late. Really? Now, that's encouraging. Do you really think that I could actually talk anybody into marrying a difficult character like me? Now, where the hell have you been? Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting? Afternoon, Jerry. This is McKenna. <laughs> well, at least you showed up. That's better than I can say for some people. Good afternoon, Mr. Diamond. So, what's up? Well, if you'll excuse me, I do have other patients to see. Nice dabbing with you, Mrs. McCandless. Obviously, something that you couldn't talk about in front of the lady. Yeah. It's about her son. It's a relief that you know. I didn't know how to tell you. I never meant to hurt you. You got to know that. I care about you. I love Trey. I don't understand it. I can't explain it, but I do. Okay, so when did you start seeing him? Never when we were together. Never. Only after. I never meant this to happen. I tried to avoid it. So, you and Trey have an affair. You love him. What next? I don't understand. <laughs> well, is he going to get a divorce? Are you two going to come out into the public? And are you going to get married? What about his career? Is he going to give up his career for you? Or are you going to be his mistress? Is that is this a bad street affair. Come on, Kelly. What? No, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I do. Oh, I do. It's not going to work. 
And it's not going to be because you don't love him, because I know you, and you will. You'll love him enough. In fact, you'll love him more than enough. But for the Cleggs, it's never enough, Kelly. <laughs> to betray, to take, to use him. You don't know him. <laughs> don't I? All right. <laughs> Maybe I don't. But I know this. You two are going to do it to hurt a lot of people. So you tell me that you haven't thought this all out. Oh, of course I thought it all out. Well, great. How do you think it's going to affect Flo? Scotty. I will never let Scotty be hurt. Well, how can you avoid it? How can you avoid it? You haven't thought this thing out. You're playing a scene. Are the scene slaying you? You know, I thought that if I explained this to you, you would understand it, but obviously I was wrong. <laughs> fine. You explain it to me. Because I'm not going to the place. You tell me how you're going to protect Scotty from this. Especially if everything else is protected. Oh, damn it. Trey is Scotty's father. He loves him. He loves me. We'll make this work. Don't you understand this thing between me and Trey? We can't help it. I don't want it. The only thing I understand is that the woman that I love is making a huge mistake. Maybe Trey loves you. Scotty, too. But the moment that he sees that you're a political liability that you're an obstacle to his career, this entire house of cards is going to come back right down on your ear. No. No, not this time. <laughs> right. Right. Kelly? We started to have something special together. You can't deny it. And neither can I. We could have been really special together. But you threw it all away. You fool. Bye. The eternal optimist, eh? Love is the world's best medicine. And with a husband as wonderful as Tyler, it's a wonder drug. I see the old Brenda rearing her pretty head. Love and marriage. Is that what this trip is really about? Let's just say that Wally and I have important things to talk Wally about. Wally and important in the same sense. I'm very impressed. Come on. No. Tell me what this is about. No, it's none of your business. And besides, we're going to end up having to have our talk in the parking lot because you didn't get me my fake ID like you saw me. Ah, uh, poor baby. I guess you'll just have to see me waving to you from the casino window. Huh? Oh, thanks a lot. Hmm. I guess that ID did mean a lot to you. You know it did. I guess if I would have given it to you, you would owe me a lot, right? I would have been eternally in your debt. A man of my word, Brad. Yeah. Eternally in my debt. Yes, eternally and forever. Okay, in that case, buy me a drink. So it is. Look, so clear you can see every single star in the sky. You know what they say? They say that if you wish upon the brightest star right there, that your wish comes true. Well, I don't need a star. Molly, every single one of my wishes has come true tonight. He asked me to marry you. I did that, didn't I? And it's so magical. It's all so unreal. I just keep thinking that I'm going to wake up and it's going to be some wonderful dream. Well, it's no dream, Brenda. I want you to be my wife. No. More than whether I ever was anything. Well, Molly, I've waited forever for this day. I'd rather 
of suggestion. Did I ask you? No, but I think it's worth listening to. I think we should move the slot machines. Now, they're what draws people into this place. Easy to play, therefore very inviting. I think we should move them up to the front. That way we can hook the people when they come in the doors. Right now, we got the blackjack tables up there, and to some people, that's very intimidating. Since when did you become the expert on casino design? Well, that's just common sense. You know what your problem is, Wally? You're too big for your boots. Well, I don't think so. I I'll admit I have quite a bit to learn, but I am pretty quick. <laughs> is that right? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't ever go thinking that you've learned as much as me. Because if it comes to a showdown, there's no contest. Just take care of those liquor orders. And don't let any personal calls get in the way. Hear? Because he's got personality. Personality. We know McCandless took a flight from Heathrow to Munich. Then he took a train to the Alps, to a village called St. Emil. St. Emil? The monastery? Looks that way. Is Landy's information reliable? Well, you should know. I don't. You tell me. Facts are great, Jarrett. But it makes sense. So the captain's cell ends at the monastery of St. Emil. you lie? I don't know. Well, you made good time or what? A surprise? Surprise to see Jordy here. Yes, well, you don't think I couldn't have let the brat come to the city of sin on chaperone, huh? Do you expect me to leave that the ruins when you came? Look at this place. Wally's great. It's fantastic, Wally. To see everybody in the monitor. Uh, Jordy, watch that, will you? This is the manager's place, and he's exactly my best friend. Wait a second. Look at the lovely lady. Oh, this place is perfect, Polly. Would you like to change places? And have you stuck behind this desk mm. instead of me? Any day of the week. Really? I'm kidding, Brenda. Oh. Ahem. <clears throat> what, Jordy? You want to go play blackjack? No, I can play blackjack <laughs> later. Right this minute, you want me to go to Blackjack. Yeah. A word of warning, Wally. Brenda's got some important news to give you. I would get my armor out if I were you. Can you get out of here? I'm gone. Bye. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take this wrong. I'm very glad that you're here. But I've got a ton of work to do. So, before we can go out to dinner or do anything else, why don't you go upstairs and get a room, and then we can... I will, and we can. Can't you bribe the manager or something? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, what the heck. All right, so what's this big, important news you're going to tell me? Today's our anniversary. Hmm? Our anniversary, three months ago, exactly. Reverend Parks married us. Friend, is that right? I don't think I'm ever going to forget that moment. You were the most beautiful bride. Completely illegal, but beautiful. Illegal on paper, maybe, but not in my heart. Hey, do you remember what else happened, though? That whole deal with my parents? What, are you kidding? It was our only big fight. Yeah. Anyway, they said three months. It's been three months. They got to know you. Daddy even gave you a job. I know what he's saying. It's time for us to collect on our half of the deal. We can get married now. I don't like it, Judge. I don't like not knowing what I want to know. And you always get your way. You need an answer to that? No. I'm working on it, Jared. What do you have in mind? I'm going to pick up McCandless' trail at that monastery in Austria. For that, I'm going to need your help. Those kinds of visions and veins just go with the territory. I just don't let those kinds of dreams get you down, okay? 
those kinds of visions and things just go to the territory. There isn't any reason for you to believe anything's happened to the captain. Any reason anything's happened to the captain. There is no reason for you to believe to go to the territory. Any reason anything's happened to the captain. Was that you?